So, good morning. As presented, my name is Filipos Komenis. I will present a joint work with Hector Hefner called Beliefs in multi agent Planning. So the outline of the, of the talk will be that we'll start uh, talking about some of the problems we're trying to solve. I will come back to the problems during the presentation. And the idea is that through the problems, you will get also the motivation of our work, which is, can be summarized in one sentence, to be able to have a formulation that can deal with belief tracking in a multi-agent setting, especially when we're talking about nested beliefs. I will continue with how we represent our problems. I will talk a bit about epistemic logic and what we borrow from, from this from epistemic logic and especially the Kripke structures. I will show translation to classical planning and then the conclusions and results. So in our setting, we deal with multiple agents. We allow physical actions, sensing about the world, or about the knowledge of other agents. And our task is given a set of initial states to find a linear plan that will lead to the goal. From notation point of view, we'll use the epistemic literal KIL, which can be read as agent I knows that L is true. So our first example is called collaboration through communication. And the idea is, assume you have a corridor of four rooms, two agents within uh, the second room, and a number of blocks scattered between rooms one, three, and four. The agents can move left and right, and when they are in a room, they can sense which blocks are in the same room with them and communicate this knowledge. The goal of the problem, agent A knows where B1 is, and agent B knows where the block B2 is. I will jump directly to the plan that solves this problem. So we see that the plan is A moves left, sees which blocks are in room P1, B moves right, sees which blocks are in room P3, A announces if B2 is in the room 1, and B announces if B1 is in room P3. If we check the plan from the point of view of one agent, assuming A, A is looking to find the position of the block B1. When he moves to the first room on the left, and he senses, if the, room, if the block B1 is in that room, then this part of the goal is satisfied. Assuming that the block is not in the, in the first room, when B announces if B1 is in room P3, again, either agent A will know that the block is in room P3, or he can derive that since the block is not in room one, in room one and it's not in room three, it has to be in the room four. And the same holds for the, from the point of view of agent B. So the plan accounts for what to communicate and when. So what we mean from what to communicate is that the agents do not announce all their knowledge about the states. They only announce the position of the blocks, which is relevant to the other agents. <clears throat> the second example is a multitudinal example, which is a basic example from epistemic logic. So we assume we have some, a number of children playing outside, and when they go back into the house, the father announces to them that at least one of them is muddy. The ch every child can see whether the other children are muddy, but they cannot see themselves. So the father then asks over and over, can you tell for sure whether or not you have mud on your head? What is the goal of this problem? all muddy children to know that they are muddy. Again, if we go directly to the plan, a plan that solves the problem is almost exactly as we read the problem. We have the father's announcement. Every child senses if the other, if the other children have mud. And then we have a repetition of the action that all children announce if they know that they have mud. We can show, it's easily proven, that if we have, for example, x muddy children, in x minus one repetitions of the last action, the, the, mud, the children who are muddy will know that they are muddy. So in that formulation, we make some assumptions about the problems we are dealing with. First of all, that all agents start with a common initial belief on the set of states which are possible. Secondly, all actions are public. And thirdly, physical actions are deterministic. The last assumption can be relaxed with the use of auxiliary literals, which is a trick also used in, um, in other parts of single ledger planning. So, what is a linear multi-agent planning problem? P, it's a tuple. It contains the set, of, the set of agents, the set of atoms, the initial situation, and we have three types of actions. We have physical actions, sensing actions, and public updates. And, of course, the goal. We assume that each action alpha can have a precondition, and when we're talking about a formula, we're talking about a formula that can either be objective, or epistemic, or combination of both. So physical action denotes a deterministic 
The transition function that maps any state S to a state S prime, given that action A. Assessing action, it's an action that uh, represents the fact that when an agent senses a formula, he can distinguish between the states where this formula is true and the states where the formula is false. Is false. So we can see it as a partition on his belief state of the world. An update action, on the other hand, is an action that makes a formula phi common knowledge. Here we have to note two things. First of all, we said that all actions are public. This means that in the sensing action, the application of the sensing action is public. The result of the sensing action, what exactly the agent sensed, it is not. Secondly, the difference between the sensing action and update action, sensing action is what we said, a partition of the belief state of the agent. So if he senses P, he can distinguish between states where P is true and states where P is false. But we have an update where P equals P, all the states where P is false will be discarded as possible. So if we go back to the muddy children example, where we assume we have three children, so we have three agents, three atoms representing whether they are muddy or not, and we have eight possible states. The first action, which was the father's announcement, will be represented by an update action with a formula that at least one of the children are muddy. The second action represents the fact that all, all children, all agents, sense whether the, other, the rest of the children are muddy or not. So imagine after the sequence of events that we want to check whether in the world where only one child is muddy, where this would denote the XOR relationship between MA, MB, and MC, what in, in a world where one uh, child is muddy, if there exists a child that knows that it's muddy. So assume that the muddy child is A. What A sees after the sensing is two children which are not muddy. But he knows from the announcement of the father, from the update, that there exists at least one. So he can derive that he is the one who is muddy. Assume a, a second event following where all agents sense whether there exists an agent that knows that he's muddy. So everybody senses whether A knows that he's muddy, B knows that he's muddy, and C knows that he's muddy. In this case, assume that we want to check in a state where A and B are muddy and C is not, whether there is an agent who knows that he's muddy. And the idea here is, again from the point of view of A, A sees a muddy child and a clean child. So she cannot respond initially to the question of the father whether he is muddy or not. The second time, he will know. And the reason is that if he was not muddy, B will know as soon as he sensed that he was the muddy child. Since he says that he's not, he, he must mean that he sees another muddy child, so A can derive that he's the muddy child. And the same holds for B. So given our problems, we define a representation for these problems. So we have a joint belief, B at any time step T, which is a vector of conditional beliefs. And the conditional belief, given a state test at time t, is the beliefs of all the agents at time step t, assuming that the true hidden initial state was S. We have the valuation of the, of the state test, which is the state that results from the initial state after the action of sequence from an event 0 to an event t minus 1, denoted with epsilon here. And we have the set R for each agent i, which is a set of possible initial states S prime that the agent cannot distinguish from the actual initial state S. Again, back to the multitudinal example, we have that time t zero. Initially, all states are considered possible. We have the valuation of each state. And we have that all agents, given any one of the states, believe that all states are possible. So our joint belief is a vector of, condi of conditional beliefs. And each belief, in the initially, is the same, differing on the valuation of the state. So given our representation, we define how our actions actually update this representation. So a physical action have no, uh, has no effect on the beliefs of the agents. It has only effects on the actual world, which is defined by the state as of function. A sensing action does not change the world, but change the beliefs of the agent. And the idea is that given this set of states are from the point from the, uh, of agent I, we will keep only the states which agree with the state test concerning the truth valuation of the formula phi which is sensed. And lastly, we have an update phi, which again affects only the beliefs of the agents. But in this case, 
in the, in at, at time t plus 1, it will contain only the states in which phi is true, independently of whether the initial state test actually agrees that phi is true or not. So we, what we need to define is what does, what does it mean for a formula phi to be true in a state test given joint belief B at time t. And for this, we go to epistemic logic and to a specific structure that they use called creeper structures. So informally, a creeper structure is a graph. Each node in the graph represents a world. And each edge in the graph, tagged with an agent's name, represents the uncertainty that the agent has be the, between the two worlds. So if there exists an edge between two nodes, the agent cannot distinguish between the two worlds. And this allows us to evaluate arbitrarily nested epistemic formulas. For example, here we have that an, an agent I knows phi in a world W given a, a cryptic structure K, if and only if phi is true in all the worlds W prime, such that I cannot distinguish between W and W prime. And there is a clear and simple mapping from a belief representation to the cryptic structures. The worlds in the cryptic structure are the set of possible initial states that we have in our representation. The valuation of the worlds is the same valuation that we have in our states. And the, the edges, the accessibility relations between the worlds in the cryptic structure depend on our sets Ri, denoting whether I can distinguish between S prime given S. So a formula phi is true in a state test in our belief representation when this formula is true in the state test in the cryptic structure after the mapping. And we denote that an action sequence is a plan if it maps a belief an initial belief representation 0 to a belief representation n, and the goal is satisfied to the resulting joint belief. So we have a representation. We have defined how we update this representation based on our set of actions. So we actually now need to compute the plans to actually solve the problem. And for this, we have a translation to classical planning. So we compute plans for our original problem P as classical plans for the translation K of P that uses axioms. For notation, we have a set of uh, atoms, which are the atoms of our original problem. LK, which is a set of our positive epistemic literals that appear in the original problem. And we also denote auxiliary literals, D of phi for S and S prime, that represent the, re that represent the, the fact that I can distinguish between st states S and S prime. And this is a translation, which fitted in one slide. So I will only explain two parts. First of all, we see in the first one that our atoms in our translation are the atoms that we had in the original problem, but now tagged with a, with a state. And this is also a method used in conformal planning in translation to classical planning, which is a way of saying that the belief state we initially have is collapsed to one state without losing the information of what was true in which of the original states. In the same way we define our initial situation, our goal remains the same, and we have three actions. So for the physical actions with a conditional effect, if C, then E, our new physical action will have as many conditional effects as the number of states, where now the conditional effects are, if C is true in a, in a state test, then the effect will be applied in the same state. A sensing action, where for simplicity, assuming we have an agent I sensing C, we have a conditional effect for all pairs of states, where we say if C is true in a state and C is not true in another state, then this, the sensing agent can distinguish between the two states. And the update C, from which we denote that if not C is true in an S prime, it means that for an agent can distinguish from all states that state. Lastly, we define our set of axioms, where an axiom, in our case, given an epistemic literal, we say that an agent I knows L given a state test, if L is true in S, and for all other states S prime, either L has to be true in S prime, or the agent I can distinguish between the two states. So an action sequence pi is a plan that solves the linear multi-agent planning problem P, if and only if, pi is a plan that solves the classical planning problem with axioms K of P. And these are the results. Uh, I would like to focus mainly on the multitude and the collaboration through communication I've already discussed. We also have some other interesting domains, especially the sum domain, where the sum is similar to the muddy children, but now instead of having a child either muddy or not muddy, we have that each child can have a number from 1 to n. And what is common knowledge among the agents 
is that one of the numbers is the sum of the other two. But they do not know which number is that. So here the goal would be for one agent to know his number, while the other agents announce what they know about their own numbers. And the last one is the world rooms, which is also similar to collaboration to communication, but now we have a corridor of rooms. Each room contain a, contains a letter. All the letters together form a word. So the set of our possible initial states is the number of goals we have. And it's interesting here because we can see plans where an agent can go, for example, to room one, see the letter, to room two, and see the other letter. But instead of choosing to announce what he has sensed, he chooses to announce what he has derived about another room. So for related work, single edge planning with sensing, where we have the same representation as beliefs as set of states, and a number of translations, where from where we also borrow, for example, the, the tool of tagging every little with a state. The qualitative decentralized POMDPs, which is also a compilation of multi-agent problems, two classical ones, where here the main difference between the two, the two works is that in our case, we mainly focus on belief tracking with nested beliefs. And of course, the work with, of in dynamic epistemic logic, where here I give one reference, why well, we can give many, since they are the guys who, who actually tried since the 80s to model knowledge and update. I would also like to mention here the work of uh, Christian, which he presented in this uh, year's workshop in DMAPS where he also deals with uh, multi-agent planning problems. He can also deal with nested beliefs. Our main difference between the works is that we can represent any formula, any epistemic formula, while in the work of Christian, mainly the difference is that he doesn't deal only with knowledge, but also with beliefs. So he can have much more privacy in his examples than we do. So as a summary, we have introduced a framework for handling beliefs in multi-agent, partially observable settings. It was built on top of methods already introduced from in single-agent planning. Captures a fragment of dynamic epistemic logic, mainly the S5 model. The complexity of the translation is quadratic to the number of states. And current, as current work, we're trying to have more effective forms of belief tracking, especially in online contexts. That's it.